is your hero. Prepare for battle. Learn from your mistakes. I'm feeling great. Already some aggression on hand. Of course, uh... As to be expected from this region, he seems to want to get running at each other early on. First blood already being drawn in Matoshka. That is one thing the one move lineup can do really well, right? Like they've got great initial levels, great control early on. They've got a good amount of stuns. You've got this pretty nice CK Oracle lane, which can just be aggressive. You can play with a root, you can play with the Chaos Vault really well suppress look for those kill opportunities and start running from there maybe by you know uh, applying pressure in the side lanes you can buy that space out for the mid tango as lizard pointed out to get a rolling start as you'd want and just take over from there but and this is team spirit mike they're running off with a slightly weird draft pause five viper up against the alp which is also a bit strange it's it's going to be an interesting one to watch for sure here uh, certainly. I mean, I kind of agree with uh, with where the panel was going as the well, right? Like, begins. it does feel like there's going to be a lot of emphasis uh, from one moves in to really set a nice tempo for their Alchemist. It's a classic 4 Protect 1, but it's not really because you've got a safe lane CK. So it, I, I think Lizard said Afterlife on the Pango has to have a godly game to create enough space for these two cores in the mid and safe. I tend to agree with that. And I was kind of shocked to see the, uh, the last pick CK coming out from Knight. Mind you, to be fair, it was it was seeming a seeming to be a pretty bad out game, but it's going to be a very interesting game. I do agree with you. This top lane that we are looking at, uh, you have the Viper making his move up. You are going to have Knight and the CK and say you, of course, on the Pos Five Hoodwink, along with Collapse against them on the position three Lycan. Now, John, this Pos three Lycan, do you imagine that the farm comes out easily here for Collapse? I think you've got some early pressure you can pump out here in one move. Again, the double stuns with a Hoodwink instead of the Oracle is still pretty good. Bushwhack along the Aircrunch shot can be pretty aggressive. You can sort of clear out the Wolves when they do come out here from Collapse. So you can kind of farm that up. You do have the right-click harassment from Oshka onto a melee core. So your Viper can just kind of AFK right-click, poison attack, or block, disrupt any pulse, and allow the Lycan to just farm up that way. It's a little bit back and forth. If you don't play with a stun pressure here on one move, it can become a pretty oppressive lane for night so you kind of want to see one move maybe hit level three that's when your spells feel really good especially on ck and start to maybe find some openings but at that point collapse cards get pretty tanky as well with his passive so it, it's a tougher one for the ck hoodwink but there is still an opening for aggression it's just easier for team spirit to play passively here that's fair john we'll have a look at the other lanes as well of and you're gonna have Bella Jewel against Toronto Tokyo. So the mid tiny versus the mid arc is something you and I haven't had the pleasure of watching uh, for a very long time. It feels. How does this matchup go, Jonathan? Is is there something we're meant to be watching out for between these two? 
it, it's a lot more passive for Miller Jewel. I mean, as long as he has access to his small camp, you feel pretty good on the elk. You're always going to have that farm advantage. So small camp access is more important than anything else, even than, even more important than Ruin. And I think as long as that support pressure isn't coming in to cut off the elk's early farm, your investments in the hero will still pay off. There's always the kill threat from Toronto, Tokyo. Oh, the overstep okay. avalanche toss is going to be there. Maposhka. Almost dropping there on the Viper, John, getting very, very low. And littering, bro. It's those timings you kind of mentioned earlier, right? Like, they're not quite level 3 yet, but even at level 2, they can start to get very aggressive here with the CK Hoodwink. And even with the Viper, it seems to be a bit of a struggle here for Maposhka. I don't think you mind too much on the Viper, though. Look at Collapse. He's very healthy in the lane. Already has a value point in his regen with a Feral Impulse. So he can just kind of hold through a lot of that early jump that one might want to do onto, onto Lycan. And as long as the Viper is taking that pressure off, you don't mind. You're buying space out for your core. This is a greedier offlane to start with for Team Spirit. Just allowing Collapse to farm and sacking the Viper. It's, it's kind of what you want to see. You are keeping that CK sort of down as well. He's not over farming here, not ahead of Lycan and CS. So you're still seeing what you want despite costing more regen here for the side of Team Spirit. Plus bot lane, Phantom Ape. He's just going to drop here. Yatora God, able to pick him up on the jug. Of course, Mira going to be there on the Pulse 5 Rubik and Natural Life on the position 3 Pango. They do manage to secure a, a kill there for the Jug, which is yeah, a very good start here for Yatoro. And John, you may have noticed that Yatoro, he's not really struggling too much in terms of CS either. No, I mean, the Pango lane does feel pretty good for Afterlife on the offlane. In, in combination with the Oracle, you have some pretty interesting swashbuckle plays you could try to make with the Fortune's End. A little bit hard to catch, and of course, catching a jug out when the spin is up is very hard to do. They'll try to make a move on Mira, though. Old spin out, but Yatora going to be kind of blocked off there by Mira, so not really going to be able to get the damage off he wanted. Panto. Radiance Courier. Has He's going to be able to find the Courier on his way out. I'm sure they'll be just fine with that anyway. They got the items off the, uh, the Courier there for the jug. So far, though, one to one. Very kind of even lanes going on here, but I suppose that top lane is probably a bit scary here for, for one move considering the Lycan's just getting a bit too much. His Knight, I'm gonna try to move in on the Viper, but Maposhka's gonna be just fine. It's that Helm of the Dominator into the Overlord timing you get worried about though against Collapser on this Lycan. Once you have that up, it, it just feels like they really do control the map. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to clear out that pressure. I mean, the Alk can kind of clear out waves, so can the Pango to an extent. It's just not something you'd necessarily want, especially from Pango. You kind of want to be aggressive. So you need to see that same momentum coming out for one move on your own offlane collapse. Just having a much better time, and Knight's always low HP. Maposhka, again, just doesn't care if he drops low, doesn't care if he gets Reality Rifted rifted up. He's... it's a Viper. You kind of win the right-click trades anyway with Corrosive Skin to slow down the attack speed, the damage you do. The resources one move have to drag in just to keep Knight in lane is costing him a little more on Sayu, and the Hoodwink does need some levels. It does need a little bit of farm to really feel good in comparison to the Viper. You want you know, build up in four staff or two to catch from Poshka again. They do. Sun is there. Akon shot to follow, but for Poshka, he's actually fighting back. Still Knight getting a very nice crit, but now Collapse going to go for a bit of a chase. Not going to be able to secure the kill, though, as Knight is going to be just fine to survive. Collapse, though, he'll keep going for a bit more, but... He has no way of locking Radiant down the CK, so I really hope to secure his life. Maposhka, though, on the brighter side for the Viper, he's going to come back with a full reset. And like you mentioned, John, Knight's already low HP. Chances are this top lane's not going to get any easier, as he will find Maposhka. And it seems like he'd rather almost just die now as Knight. But he actually stick charges up and tries to run for it. He will survive for now. And he does have a sound on the way. Problem is, Toronto Tokyo is going to find him, and he even finds his courier. Yeah, it's just hit and run. I mean, you think about the gold exchange and that sort of kill as well, right? Mike, you get almost like 200 gold for, for killing off the Viper. You maybe have to drag in a couple uh, salves at this point. Negated by the regen you have just to hold that lane. You're getting some EXP. You're not finding the farm in that CK. So, again, even bleeding off Viper kills doesn't count for much from Team Spirit and an overarching lane. Point. They are creating some good moves on bot, though. Yeah, nice pick up, Yatoro. Can end up going down as Panto's able to pick him up. Nice initiation. Going right after the jug, after they saw the spin being committed. You take him down, and that's going to be a very important pick off to make against Yatoro, considering how much the CK is currently struggling in terms of CS. Uh, very, very important to try and slow down the jug a little bit more as well, and with those kind of kills, they are certainly doing so.
here. Keeping the choke down and kind of just building up in Pango. That's the bigger thing. You're you're having a great start here for Afterlife. Double Bracers up, Arcane Boots up, can just sustain his harassment out now. Level 6 has a role to play with as well. So you have the strong start from Pangolier, at least to start to make some plays down the line. You're starting to get some space out for your Alchemist to start working that jungle now with level 6 up in Melodruel. And it is a Radiance Alk buildup. So you know, kind of what we've seen some Al Alchemists kind of gravitate back towards, back to the Radiance build, no one to punish. And, you know, it's not the strongest laning start for Melodule, but if he still finds that Radiance time, you're pretty happy here for one move. Rotation's top lane here, John. I see the Oracle rotate up with the TP. Panto just making sure that Toronto Tokyo can't do as he pleases on that mid-tiny. I, I do think as well, going back to your point, John, the, the Radiance does pay off even even better here because you're, you're against the Lycan. So naturally, you're going to enjoy kind of burning down those creeps and you know, the, uh, the evasion chances going... It's only going to be a, a bit more valuable here this game, I think, as top lane, the Poshka. You get whiffed up, Stun is there, he should go down, but Collapse is going to try and force something out of this. Bates eating though, going to make it rather tough, but Seiyu, still going to be chased down. With the creeps, he might have enough, but it doesn't seem like he wants to free the center away. So Collapse instead, he's going to back himself out on the Lycan. And for one move, they get away with a free Viper pickle. Meanwhile... This, this elf in a bit of trouble, but instead they'll go after the Oracle. Melodjaw gonna try and fight back. Eventually we'll pick up Mira anyway. So a bit of a support trade going on. Toronto, he's still sticking around here on that tiny, but without a blink up to initiate, it may be a little bit challenging to burst the elk down. Say you'll be a lot easier though when he does find him with a very nice avalanche toss combination. Toronto Tokyo, not quite getting what he wanted, but it's almost just as good. I think you're getting a lot from Team Spirit and movement out, sure. You're investing a lot of heroes to go up top. You're kind of giving open space for the Pango to work bot lane, but there's no one to follow through the Pango because everyone's forced into the top jungle. You already scouted out the stacks in the triangle as well, and you're preventing the buildup in the top jungle. But you're committing here. They are committing, John. Knight's going to rift up. He might actually make it out as Panto is going to pop the Fate and the Purifying Flames. And he's actually going to survive, but it was a very aggressive movement from Knight. They have the vision from the Alk, but... Just trusting his teammate, making sure he thought the Oracle was going to save him, and that he does. And it saves him, it doesn't save their top tier one. Lots of space bought out by Team Spirit to allow Collapse to just push in with that Dominator. A good early objective allows them to keep that aggression up in the top jungle if they want. Look at all the sentries. A one move are already forced to put down on their top jungle early on. Four sentries watching every corner. Just to ensure there's no vision game. And look at the triangle. They get to drop this ward down. They know the stacks are there. They, they're going to be able to contest in Team Spirit's side. So you might have taken back your top jungle, but you're going to lose that triangle if you're not careful. They might at least find Mira, and they will. Afterlife able to take the kill for himself in this Pangolier. And... Well, they are taking the stacks now. Melodjul seems to be aware that something might be a little bit awry here in this triangle. And maybe just Mira moving up for the rune. They scared him off a little bit and thought, oh, I better take the stacks now. So Melodjul, go ahead and take care of it for himself. The Ancient's naturally going to take a lot longer, though. Uh, I do wonder whether Team Spirit try to rush for something in this triangle, but it doesn't really feel like they have the team fight anyway to, to force a fight this early on in the die triangle, so it looks like they're just going to let this happen. Yeah, I, uh, you've got the info, but it's like you pointed out earlier, Mike. Without the blink on Toronto Tokyo being up yet, it's pretty hard to start these fights. No one really naturally initiates on the side of Team Spirit outside of, outside of the tiny with blink. So you're just kind of forced Radiant's to sit and watch. The attack. Ancients haven't been started though. As you mentioned, it's going to need a little bit more on Melodruel to really fire. tank through that one. And they've got room bought out on the map. There's so many supports that have to stick around the Elk, have to stick around the jungle. That top lane is still pretty free, free for Collapse's split attack. push. Bot lane has been completely free for Yatoro the past five minutes almost. Feels like maybe even longer. So your jug buildup is still there keeping up with the Elk almost. And, and Collapse still has this really good timing into the Helm of the Overlord. And that is still going to be a bit painful for one move. Now, for one move, they're inching towards the blink here for Afterlife. And that's also going to be the launching point for them to get even more aggressive play with their combos. So we'll have to watch any Blade. free kills, though. Knight, Mira, he's got the rift up. Bring Knight closer, back into Maposhka. But do they have the control? It doesn't seem like it. Once again, Panther will be there with the TP out. And Knight, he's going to be just fine to survive as he'll even place a nice little sticker down there. 
And that is, again, one of the weak points. They don't have great lockdown. Not without Toronto Tokyo. And will now collapse. He has to be very careful. There's the land the push flag into the fortune's end. And eventually with the sharpshooter, surely they've got him. And they will. Panto able to take the kill with the purifying flames. Another nice kill for one move. He gets a big core to punish. Team Spirit for sticking around too long. Great smoke out from one move to get that angle. And, you know, they're, they're building up. They threaten Witter Pango. They don't really find anything else beyond that. It's not the longest cooldown in the world. And they're buying space out for Mildrew. Already has a Sacred Relic. Radiant's not too far off. Team Spirit are smoked up, though. That blink on Tor Toronto Tokyo Dive. is up, and they have a good angle to find a kill into clearing out some stacks. Yeah, Knight, he's gonna run right into them. And of course, they will go right after the stacks if they get away with this. Knight, well, he's gonna try and take the creeps while he can. He's actually just hitting the, uh, the large camp there. Trying to get the creeps before they do inevitably go down to Team Spirit. Do they go for the Ancients? It feels like they're lacking a bit of damage here, Team Spirit, but instead, they can certainly rotate mid and try to force the mid-tier one tower. Ooh. The Blink is there, Toronto with a great avalanche out. Off the two, into the Omni. No messing around from your Toro. Commits the ulti straight away. And now they can certainly look back at the Ancients. Yeah, they've got a lot of room. Clearing out two tier one towers already, taking control from top jungle again, forcing all those resources from one move to keep control there. Now getting the room to clear out that triangle, and you got a couple of large camp stacks to all go for one move. The ancients are still a lot bigger. And they've got the clear for it. They have pretty good AoE clear just with a value point in Nether Tox and of course Avalanche Tox. And just in chug with a Maelstrom up. They got a lot of farm for the trouble. Oh, nice click away. Toronto, he's just fine. He'll throw an avalanche back the way of night. And they retreat at the perfect time. All the creeps taken from the triangle. That was all the alchemist farm being robbed away from Millijul. And you're not going to be happy about that as one move. That's a lot of gold to give. No. And now the net worth lead, it swings the other way, John. Team Spirit, they'll hold the 1k net worth lead. You're, you're up against an alchemist team. You know, it doesn't feel good for the Alchem to be behind even by 1k, less than 1k on the opposing team because your Alk is still siphoning all that gold away for himself. You are still ahead of here on Melodrew, 1.5k, 1.4k above that chug of Yatoro, but it doesn't feel like enough. Your Alchemist needs way more gold to be on top. He's working on it to that point next. They are pressuring the spot lane now, though. Knight is taking the front, but Phantasm is spot out near right here. Yeah, nice swashbuckle out from Afterlife, just checking the mirror. Gonna actually swatch towards the right side, but it won't matter. Sharpshooter's gonna land, and Afterlife had the vision anyway. In the meantime, they'll go back towards the bot tier, tier 1 tower. However, there is a big smoke rotation coming from Team Spirit. Afterlife may not be able to avoid it as he does get tossed right into the Golem of Collapse. And he is gonna drop. They at least get the T1, but they might lose Panto as well as he'll try for the TP and barely makes it out. Just barely. Yeah, it's on edge. Manchester escape. I mean, you still get the bigger target here for Team Spirit. You lose your tier one, but you find that nice kill on the Panda, which again has to have a really quick build up. Yeah, for us all alone here, though. I spin away, avoiding the bushwhack from Seiyu, but Knight can certainly chase him down now with the Rift Up though, yet Toronto is gonna make his way over, and they have the Omni! Knight's gonna go down! Melodjul will try to trade here with the Sharpshooter! It's just not gonna be enough! They don't have the follow-up damage! At least they find Mirror! There's one positive in all this, and that's that they find Mirror on the Rubik. But it goes back to the point that we were making earlier and the panel was making as well, John. Afterlife needs to always be there to set up a team fight. Otherwise, you just can't fight. Yeah, I mean, they're so reliant on the roll. It's really hard to catch out something like, say, Yatoro with a spin, as we've already seen. It, the spell immunity just kind of ruins him. We need a jump factor there. And without that, it's hard to lock in those bigger heroes. They are still getting that build up. Uh, Melodrule has the space now to just work his triangle once more. No vision left there from the side of Team Spirit. They've only got low ground wards by mid lane. So you know, you're kind of allowing the Alc to still build up, still maintain that lead. 2k gold up now, going for the AC next with a blink up. It can still be a bit, bit of a big target, but Jug doesn't deal with high physical HP cores all too well, high armor and high HP cores as you are sort of reliant on Omni, but you could always go with Fear. He is going for the Shard next with a Basher on top, so you still have ways of working through that. Yatoro, though, still being surrounded here. Has the spin up. 
It's not going to be the easiest kill in the world here on Teotoro, unless Afterlife can blink in with the Rolling Thunder, but even then, it's just, you've got to time everything perfectly here. Say you, at least going to land a Bushwhack to start, and I believe Yotoro may have spotted him out. Does go for the spin away. Really does go back to the draft as well. For one move, it's like, how do you start these fights? Radiant well, they'll try out to the Viper, but he gets knocked to the low ground. Dyer's middle tower. Just everything going wrong right now for one move, and... If you can't set up with the Rolling Thunder, you've just got no hope in enforcing a team fight. In fact, Roshan's gonna get started now that the Rolling Thunder is gone. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty awkward moment for one move. They've saved their ward, but they're forced to deny it. And Roshan, without the Rolling Thunder, it's not something you can really contest. And you could try with a pushback. Not the easiest. And of course, Collapse having this strong start in Lycan already with the Radiant drums on the helm for the Overlord. And it, it, it just simple. Putting out Rosh. First Age is going the way of Team Spirit. Major start for them. Less than 1k lead standing. But again, you're up against an Alk. That feels more like a 4k lead just because the Alchemist is siphoning off so much from the other course. Afterlife still strudging, trudging behind. Night bottom network for your boss. One CK is not getting space in comparison to the Alk. I mean, this guy needs something, Mike. He's gonna need a BKB. He needs the Echo Secret. He needs Blink. Even the Shard. And that's all attack. kind of a pipe dream with all the farm being taken by Melodule right now. Yeah, it, it seems like they've kind of accepted the fact that Melodule's going to need to carry this game as he does blink away just in the nick of time. Very close call there for Melodule. Link was there in time this time around as Team Spirit. Well, they're still smoked up. They still want to try and invade the Dire Triangle, and they will do so. Nobody from one move around to try and contest this. This knight might actually make his way up. He's under vision as we speak of Team Spirit. They'll get a nice D word off, though, at the very least. And now, Team Spirit, they're the ones on the vision. But to be fair, I don't think they really mind being on the vision right now with the Aegis up on your Toro. All spells available. There's just nothing to be afraid about here as Team Spirit. Yep. You're finding everything you could possibly ask for. You've got the Ags build up for Toronto Tokyo, which is interesting. You know, we're, we're big fans of the tree volley, Mike. Keen to see what Toronto Tokyo can do with that. I mean, you know, you, you don't have that morph combination, which is always kind of sad. Uh, Morph Tiny was the funniest thing we've ever seen from, I think that was a Tiny game, so... Uh, it's still yeah. great to see a Tiny queued us up, I and mean, he has a Blink Echo, he still does a lot of damage. With a Tree Volley on hand, it's kind of meme but it does give you good clear for, say, CK Illusions down the line, and, you know, when they're all pumped up, it's good punishment. And look at TS, they just go onto high ground, no fear. Yeah, I mean, 19 and a half minutes in, they're like, well, if you don't want to fight, we'll just move into the high ground. They will start up collapse at the very least and have got the like it. A great start now for one move in this team fight. Team Spirit, oh, they're going to move back in. Toronto, Tokyo, out on the Oracle, takes the Panto, and now the Omni goes through. Oh, Melody no. Go down. They fought back on the Oracle to try and save the Elk. It was too late. Are scanning. Really nice plays from Spirit. Like, nice. they lose collapse. But they find the oracle. Oh my no! Oh my god, that that was so sad to watch. Uh, Melodrule had his unstable concoction. He had no one to throw it to. It, <laughs> it, he, he made matters worse. He got self stunned, self damaged. The after just cleaned up, and they had to declump because he didn't have that much HP on night. And the high ground just continues. It, you, you killed a couple of sports. You killed the like and sure. The jugs your issue right now with the Aegis. Oh, nothing scary. Great double avalanche and a toss out onto Seiyu, but he is going to be able to scurry away. He's trying to protect his top lane, or rather bot lane of barracks. Asher now up with the shards on the jug, and you've still got two minutes on that Aegis timing, but actually backing off? No, not quite. Your Toronto just back in onto Seiyu. It's Hey, they're going to try and defend. It's a great pushback to get started as Maposhka. He does die first. Onto you. To Toronto, Tokyo. They do at least find the Tiny as well. Maybe they find Collapse here. He'll go for a run, but he has been locked out. Rift back in into the start, and well, one move. They do get a decent team fight to go their way. Like they'll even find the dominated creep. But not too bad of a high ground defense to come out. If I am, it feels like it's more Team Spirit just playing very aggressively. 
Yeah, and it feels like they're just looking for that end game, you know, clumping up. They're just wanting to play aggressive. They feel strong in the R, but you still have to respect some of the control coming out from one move, especially if they find that roll angle. Afterlife has been doing a good job with that blink. Um, downtime of Rolling Thunder isn't that high, so you've always got a lot of aggression lined up in comparison. Yatoro didn't have Omni Slash there, didn't want to overstay his welcome, knew that if he died fast, uh, without Omni Slash, his secondary life just kind of feels pointless. So he has to play it safe. His team goes a bit too far. He's still by himself, but no one's around to punish him. And the A just still stands for about 50 more seconds. You're still in a really strong position for Team Spirit. And you cleared out at least the bot tier 3. Rack still stands, so it's not unplayable for one move. For one move's part, they, they have this potential to turn this into a bit of a ratting game. It's an it's an alchemist, of course. You are seeing Mellow Jewel going for the travels. He could just work the map, start jumping around, clearing out creepers, applying some soft pressure on objectives, and maybe slow that pacing out from Team Spirit. It does feel like you still got some item spikes lined up. Your CK is still trying to build in the BKB. They will smoke up here in one move, though, knowing the Aegis is set to expire soon. Absolutely. Do they find Dyer's middle tower is under attack? Yatoro, he's gonna go for that large camp. So Mellow Jewel, he might be able to blow him up. He just is gonna fly now, but Yatoro, he just reacts way too quick. Way too fast on the jug. Gets a spin out in time. In they go though with the rolling thunder, trying to get something set up, but nothing's being done. They'll go after the dominated creep instead. That's all they get out of this team fight. They committed quite a bit there, John. False promise, rolling thunder, chemical rage. Reality, or rather the uh, the phantasm of everything was committed, apart from the sharpshooter, and they only got the dominated creep. Yeah, that's 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 not good news for one move that allows Team Spirit to constantly push into an additional tier two. It secured control of the outpost. Roche still has a, a little bit of time until it's up, so one move should be able to regroup for that next objective if they want to. I mean, just stall out, keep farming up your elk. Play with the travels here, work your way into a CKBKB, and try to take it from there. I, I I don't know if that's enough though. It's a pretty late, almost a pretty late BKB timing, 9.7k net worth on night. He needs to be able to jump in, right? Like you need your Alk and your CK and your Pango to all be able to jump onto one target, blow them out, and then go from there. If you can get that chain stun off, we've seen it a couple of times on high ground defense. It can work out. It's just finding that circumstance, finding that condition for one move right now. It's difficult. Team Spirit reactions are too quick. Their aggression is just constant. They've got a good lock in on the top jungle. They can just avoid any movements from one move for quite some time. Absolutely. You can see the positioning right now of Spirit. They just hang around the Roshan pit, just waiting. One move. They do have a bit of the map though to farm right now, so it's definitely a good time for them to try and catch up and put up a real fight here against Spirit. I say real fight, they are ahead in kill score right now, actually 12 to 14. And it was those past Radiant's couple team fights that have kind of gone badly here for Spirit, though. They have five, five man smoked up now. One move. They we seem to be aware that there is a smoke fortune. ongoing. Melodule does hide in a tree line and nobody else shows the map here from, from one move, so see where this smoke ends up. They'll head into that triangle of the Dire. Scan was committed and they find nothing with that either. They might just camp themselves here though and just farm here instead. I don't think you mind for Team Spirit. It does still force one move to play pretty clump up. And you've got the travels and the elk, you're not really able to go out and shove in lanes. You don't have the vision to kind of play that way. So they're forced to play a lot more defensively on one move and just not leverage that flash farm the elk can have on hand. You have to say to him, Mike, I'm excited because Toronto Tokyo's Ags is almost up. 600 gold away, oh. tree volley will be in play. It doesn't feel like it's going to do a lot of damage, but you know, it, I believe it was buffed, right? In this patch, so you know, maybe it's actually good and we just don't really know. I mean, look, Johnny, he's already kind of hitting for 300, right? So, you know, <laughs> maybe he gets... It's at least going to do 1k damage in total in an AoE. And then he's going to get a, a crit stick and then suddenly you're in big trouble. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's, it's, it, at least we get the memories, right? At least we get to experience the beauty of Tree Volley one more time here with Tony. Oh, yeah. It's the, uh, the son of Ice Frog. He's Ice Frog's favorite son, in fact, I, I, I want to say, is Toronto. They're trying to move in and get aggressive, but one move, they are really just sitting back and playing passively. 
that. And they're, they're just trying to play under what vision they have. They have a little bit of forward vision under top jungle. So I was just kind of eyeing for someone who's isolated with all of Team Spirits there. And you're at the low ground disadvantage here for one who's pretty hard to pierce up. So, and they're just kind of clumped up. They're clearing a few camps in Mila Jewel. Your Alk is still farming. BKB coming up next. It still doesn't feel enough. It's only a 4k lead for Mellow Jewel over Yatoro. That's at least one major item, but it's it just doesn't feel enough for the Alk to just stand there and fight. And there's that Ags, Mikey. There we go. This is my favorite part. Let's see how much damage it does, though, to be fair. I mean, like you said, John, maybe it doesn't even do damage. Mellow Jewel, smoke broken, ward down, avalanche. Oh, there's your tree volley. And it doesn't really do much. It doesn't do enough. Uh, so it almost it's, feels a bit trolly at this point, doesn't it? <laughs> it? It does. I mean, it does force a reaction out from one move. They kind of self-stun again in the unstable. Already popped that chemical rage. Could just wait that out. Roshan isn't even up. They don't check at the right time for one move. They know it's coming up soon, though. Big fight over that Rosh off the back of this next engage. They're under the vision of Team Spirit oh right God. now to be on. These last gonna fly right through nice. Katora's already got one down. And it's the Fuzz one of one move. And they get Panto as well. All they can do is run here. One move. Let's get out of there. Afterlife, he'll keep holding them back, but Collapse wants to go for a bit of a chase as now. They jump in with Toronto with the tree volley, with the tree throw. There's just trees everywhere. Onto the high ground, Team Spirit. They, they don't even want the Aegis jump. They don't want it. They just want this yeah. game to be over already. Yeah, they don't need it. Mike, they, they know they're ahead. Again, it's 5k over an Alp. That's more like almost 9k just on the nature of that hero. High ground push doesn't take too long. They know they're down. They're rolling Thunder for some time here. And there's just no threat. One move has no big play. Unless they, say, line up a bushwhack with the acorn shot into a roll with a huge uh, fortune sand roof, maybe? Yeah, you, you, it still feels like you lack damage yeah. there. Nice. He's forced to pop that BKB very early on. They might at least find Toronto out of this, and they do. Durax is down, but they'll keep trying to punish his Maposhka. Even the TPL with the Ghost Scepter will be just fine. So the chase continues his afterlife. He does have Rolling Thunder in about five seconds. At least find somebody will collapse. He's going to get caught out here on the mic, and so they do get another. A nice kind of punishment here from one move, and maybe this actually opens up the Roshan for them. Yeah, it does. You're two heroes down on Team Spirit. You don't have your jump without the tiny. So that's the opportunity for Rosh for one move. Rosh number two with a free shard. They've got a big opportunity. They still have to clear through a couple of tier ones, and off the tier two still stands. So no high ground threat, but Toronto Tokyo doesn't want to give it away here. It's gonna be quick, John. Roshan's already almost down. They're gonna keep going for this, and if it will happen to Toronto, he can oh, get his time, but he gets a free fully out. It's actually a fair bit of damage as Panto. He's gonna go oh, down with the Oracle, and there goes Knight. Melodule, do you really want to stick around? I don't think it's a good idea right now. So Omni's up in three seconds. Mirror's in. Avalanche not gonna connect though. Mirror is going to stun himself this time. Melo Jewel will throw another stun out. The sharp shooter there. Now the rolling thunder. They're locked down for a while here. Yatoro will get the spin off in time. He's got the Omni ready to go back. No, he already committed it. Never mind. He's trying to fight the old fashioned way with the right clicks and they've got him. The Alchemist is gone for the first life. The Afterlife is forced to run away from Collapse, but now you leave the Alk to die. Melo Jewel will do just that. He will go down and so will Panto. Dying back on the Oracle has collapsed. He'll keep chasing Afterlife. Won't be able to get the Pangolier, but it's all about objectives. They'll go to the top T3 tower. They'll try to get the Megas up. I mean, you know everything's down again. That's you dealing with Aegis. It was like no problem for Team Spirit. Get a good jump in to disrupt that initial Aegis fight. Yakurus is not even scared. He doesn't have Aegis on his end. He still has to spin Bail out. They will bide their time in Team Spirit. It just shows you the confidence they have. They still jump in. They know they can deal with two lives in the Alchemist. There's no threat there. They still find a good angle to drop them low into Roshan. With the tree volley. This, this Axe is actually paying off from Toronto to Tokyo. Like, yeah, the damage is not bursty, but it's ripping through the supports. Oh, and that's more, it's more than enough. Oh, he's not going to take it. That's a bit sad. Oh, come on. Yeah, I mean, I thought he'd take the bottle, he'd fill it up, you know? <laughs> he gave it away to Yatora. He's a responsible mid laner here, Jonathan. Very good to see from Toronto, Tokyo, but you would have loved to see, wouldn't you? 
I believe you would have had oh, what, yeah. seven, eight hundred right click damage Austin. with the uh, with the tree vault <laughs> with double damage. Yeah, gotta love it. You know, uh, still want to see that crit stick. But again, as you mentioned, Toronto Tokyo is playing responsibly. Mike going for the BKB. Speaking of, you also have your full BKB done for Clamp, so it's much more free to run around. But all the spell immunity coming out from the core is locking them in now, and that chain stun, it, it just feels impossible. One move, they still have this one last Rax to play with, no tier trees, they've got to throw their bodies forward. If this doesn't pan out their way, this could be the beginning of the end already. Well, they're fighting to the DD with of Yatoro. Look how fast he takes that Rax. 41 range Rax gone. He might just wait for the next spin and just move in with DD rune again. Like, how do you stop him if he just spins his way in? You've got no way of locking him down. Instead, though, they're going to smoke up here. Team Spirit, through the mid lane, it seems, is where they're going to go. I don't know, avoid breaking the smoke unless they see Mela Jewel, and that they will. He does show up, but they won't make the jump in. Not quite yet. Instead, Team Spirit, oh, they've got the spin back up. They could just move into the final racks. See if they can get it done, though. Bushwhack will hold down your Toro. He's still fine, but a go for an Omni Slash and just get rid of Afterlife immediately. The creeps will get rid of the racks. At least not all of it yet. Melodjul gonna try and move in with the stun out, but it does nothing. Keep in mind, Afterlife fought back. Trying to defend this high ground, but with the, uh, with the HP of the melee barracks, there's just no chance of that happening now, surely. And it wasn't. Nice spin out. Stun out, Melodjul in trouble again. We'll have the false promise to help him out. They are getting plenty of damage off here on Melodjul. So we'll have Black Ops with the typical range for now, but instead they've got Afterlife. A dieback immediately from the Pango. And they call it. They've had enough. GG's call. One move. It's an interesting kind of draft, John, and I, I believe it was Blizzard again who did say that it felt like they were trying to cheese teams. I think it, it just good.